vast majority of Greeks who came here in the early 1900s had nothing. And yet, this amalgam of whatever the magic was in Greece matched with whatever the magic is in here in America enabled Greeks to go from the bottom of the list of education and income of all the nationalities in America in one generation past each one of them up to the top of all the nationalities. How many things are in common between the American culture and the Greek culture when it comes to values of life and way of political system? Um, values which is um, human rights, uh, respect, uh, um, respect for others, uh, giving place and space to all of the uh, people around you, accepting or respecting them, uh, were the things that we were taught by my family also in Greece. I think that as Greeks, we share very much in the ingenuity, passion, our stubbornness, <laughs> and our determination to overcome uh, or, her or hurdles, our ability to work hard, to rebuild, our ability to find joy and search for joy even in difficult uh, circumstances. In culture, we're always taught to, to respect uh, and take the great advice of our elders, uh, which I think is, is one of the most critical uh, and most important li life lessons that we've all learned. The synergy of Greek thought and the synergy of the Christian faith is the moral, ethical, and above all, spiritually human basis upon which the best life can be lived and the best life can be shared with others. My dad um, was born and brought up in a predominantly Greek town in Western Turkey, back in the days when we had a million and a half Greeks in Asia Minor. And... Uh, when he was 15, he decided he wanted to come to the United States to go to school. It's very interesting. He was 15 years of age. His father said, you can't go. I'm going. You can't go. I'm going. Can't go. I'm going. Finally, uh, his brother said, let him go. He already had a couple of brothers here in Massachusetts, up in Lowell, the great next town, the textile town. And, uh, and so over he went, couldn't speak the language, didn't have a nickel in his pocket. And 12 years later, that kid graduated from the Harvard Medical School in 1924. How he did it, I have no idea. When I look back and kind of reflect on our family's immigrant story and essentially our relationship to Greece, it, you can't decouple it from that of the church. And I start with that because my papu, our papu, was a, a priest in Greece, and he was he, the younger brother of another priest. And so there were two brothers that were both priests in a, in a village in uh, kind of northwest Peloponnesus. And my older, my uncle, my uh, papu's brother, said to him, look, I've just heard that they're asking for priests from Greece to go to America and serve as immigrant priests for this growing immigrant community. I'm too old to do it, but you should consider it. And it was really kind of the push and inspiration of his older brother that said, you're young, you've just had couple children, but you can do this. As, as Greeks, I think uh, education is something that my family has always uh, treasured and, and valued and something that they, they constantly sort of pushed me to, 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 to continue to, to strive at. And I think I, I went to Princeton as an undergrad, and I think that sort of has, has opened up a number, number of doors um, for, for me as, as the years go, go ahead. But how it is that your Greek heritage in keeping you grounded and keeping you focused on maintaining your integrity uh, will allow you uh, to be happy at the end of the day with what you're doing and to progress because if you draw on that and you stick to that, your reputation as a person of integrity will precede you. But when he left Greece, my great-grandfather gave him a little icona of Panagia and, and five, five things. We call them in my family the roles of lies. Number one is have faith and trust in God. Number two is to always learn. Number three is to be honest and always tell the truth. Number four is work hard, but don't only work hard, work smart. Number five is to always remember your family. There's no magical solution to how I get from here. Don't think about how I get from here to there. Think about how I get better every day. When you make yourself better every day, um, you come home. What am I going to read tonight that's going to make me better? 
How am I going to think about this? How do I reflect on how I did? Hold yourself accountable to your own standards. Don't worry about anybody else. Everything else takes care of itself. You're entering, I think, into a very exciting period in the life of the country. Uh, I personally chose to become a diplomat. I wanted to be a foreign service officer literally from my teenage years. I graduated at the age of 20, so I wasn't even 21 when I took the oral examination. Yet, If you pass the written, you take the oral. And the, I took that in July of 1960, and the guy, there were a three-man panel, and they asked me, well, when are you, they told me I'd passed. And uh, they said, well, when will you be ready to work for the State Department? I said, <laughs> my answer was, well, after I turn 21, because you're not allowed to work uh, in, in that kind of a job unless you were 21 years old. Um, but remember back after the Second World War, you know, Greece had been devastated. It was incredibly poor. My grandmother uh, and my husband, both of his grandmothers, none of those three, uh, three of our four grandmothers, never learned to read or write, did not go to school for a single Education, day. Education, pride in your heritage, belief in God, friends and family. And my papu, who's been gone for a long time, but my brothers and I always remember him and his zest for life. But he always said he was not a millionaire in maternal things, but he was in friends and family. And I just I remember that always. Um, I think work ethic is is really the main thing that I've uh, learned from my parents. You know, my, my, my dad came to this country with $50 in his pocket. He worked very hard. He always had two or three jobs. Uh, and then he had a small business. Uh, and even with a small business, he was doing that. And he was working uh, at night as a banquet waiter. We go way back, like 2,500 years back, and think about whether it's medicine or history or philosophy or whatever, chances are it started in Greece. And um, my parents had that ethic and they um, did the best they could to be educated and worked very hard to make sure that my sister and me were even better educated and with, with all of the opportunities that come from that. Some of the things that my um, parents, grandparents, and really my godparents too have taught me um, that I use all the time when I agree education is essential. Um, I've really benefit, benefited from it. Um, I think others have too. I really, I really think a love of learning is really important in life. Second is to reach out to people who you admire or aspire to be and just ask them to get coffee. You know, it sounds crazy. You, you will think to yourself as I did, like this person has no interest in talking to me. I have nothing to offer them. But what you'll find is that, that those people at some point have done the same thing. And people who probably had no business talking to them took time to meet with them and give them free advice. And so understanding, you know, what you want your story to be, what you want to be able to say to your kids or your grandkids, why you did this, why you spent this time here, I think is a really important thing to ask yourself ahead of time and then ask yourself as, as you're going through it. Uh, and, as you know, get, taking stock every year or so saying, um, what am I getting out of this? You know, am I learning what I want to learn? Am I contributing what I want to contribute? Am I healthy? Am I happy? Or would I rather be doing something different? It, it's a very important question to ask. Uh, I guess uh, looking back over the years, uh, I see the benefits of my Greek American heritage much more clearly now than I did when I was young and going through it. Uh, my uh, story is a classic one for my generation, uh, a hardworking immigrant family in which uh, I was the first to have the privilege of going to college and to law school. Their hard work gave me uh, the full opportunity uh, to uh, get an education in the opportunities of America. My, my Greek heritage story is, uh, goes, goes back to my grandparents, who were all um, uh, immigrants to the U.S. Um, my, my parents on my mom's side um, came over separately. My, one of my papus, my, my, my mom's father, is from uh, the island of Andros, um, and, and he left at the age of 16 and, uh, and never went back. He has a sister he had never met. 
Um, uh, uh, but he made a life for himself in, in the U.S. He came over and laid rail for the, for the railroads um, and uh, eventually had a small hotel and restaurant in, in San this Francisco. This is the part, really cool thing about the Greek American community in D.C. and in policy and politics, that no matter your political stripes, um, like 99.9% .9 of the Greeks in this town look out for each other and are hardworking and are very well accomplished and are very well respected. Being Greek gives you a unique pers uh, perspective that also um, burdens you with a few traumas, um, but making you, because you are different, it does make you work harder at pretty much everything. Uh, you know, the values of immigration are true in my family as well. The the appreciation for hard work, the, the, the notion that uh, nothing is given to you, that you have to earn it, uh, the value of education, um, the, you know, the desire to both assimilate in a new, wonderful country while maintaining and preserving your own culture and heritage and, and family background, all of these because things. Because the true. hard work of my grandfather putting me through college in, in, in uh, 2005, uh, I got hired at KDK TV. And my first live shot was during the six o'clock news. And um, when they uh, when they when they introduced me uh, at six thirty, all I could think of was my grandfather. I knew he was watching. And the phone rang off the hook at back at back at home uh, because it was sort of the local boy does good. And I vowed to myself as long as my grandfather was with us, I was going to stay in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, he passed away in 2009. But, but I felt like I, I was able to fulfill that mission. Get that hands-on experience. That is the experience that is really going to drive you um, and, and get you, you know, to be, number one, knowing that this is really what you want to do, um, and number two, uh, cr honing your craft. So when I um, was doing all of that, doing those internships, getting that hands-on experience, I realized this is exactly the direction that I want to and, go. And, you know, basically the immigrant grandparents told my parents' generation, you can do whatever you want in this great country. You just have to work hard enough to get there. And so I grew up in a household, um, Westfield, New Jersey, walking distance from Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church. So Mikey could go to Greek school just walking there, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> well, one of the things we, did, we, we always took incredible pride in and I watched it as my dad, and these are the guiding values that, you know, not, I won't say unique to the, to the Greek community and, and our heritage, but really focused. And I think it's an acute point growing up. And I saw to my father, and that was just the grit, the resilience. You know, you talked about integrity. And my dad, you know, I remember growing up, you know, to be lazy was the worst thing. To be a man without integrity, optimos. Um, my grandmother never saw her parents again. <laughs> you know, left Greece, came here uh, as a 14-year-old girl, never went back, uh, never saw her parents, only communicated by writing, by writing letters. Um, you know, this is in the 19, or, you know, around 1910, I think she came. And uh, so uh, really, I think, uh, kind of very um, difficult uh, times and and that story of kind of perseverance and courage is something that I think uh, Greek Americans really relate to because there's so many stories like that. There's absolutely no substitute for hard work. Um, my dad asked me to get my first job when I was 14, not because we needed the money, but, he, but because he wanted me to understand how hard it was to, to make a dollar. And throughout my whole life, um, I've gone by this one principle that I'm sure many of you heard of. Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Very few people, peoples, ethnic, racial people, have a history as the Greeks do. I mean, literally, Greeks have been at the forefront of world culture for three millennia. Both of them had instilled in their kids and then into, certainly into me, this um, public service ethic, 
right? Like that we are here to be part of a community that the most, one of the most important things you can do is be a part of a community and give back. My mother ended up getting a fellowship position at Georgetown in ophthalmology. And she told me, she would tell me the story about how she didn't know anyone at Georgetown, but she knew she wanted to work there. And so she sat in the kind of the chairman of ophthalmology's office next to the receptionist and sat there all day for two days came in the morning, came in and just wanted five minutes. And she knew that she could convince him if she could just speak to him for five minutes. And that secretary who allowed her to sit next, sit in that waiting room and gave her coffee and was really kind to her, Charlene, ended up being my mom's secretary when she became the head of ophthalmology at Georgetown, you know, 10 years later. Um, we said to them that we wanted to open a bakery. Um, and they said, absolutely not. We did not come to this country for you girls to work in a bakery. People in our country are trying to get out of that business. You know, we want you to go to school and become doctors and lawyers or work for a big company. Um, the pillars that we hold um, near and dear to our heart in our business that really have guided our business, the ones that we learned from our grandparents. Um, like Catherine mentioned, um, just courage because, you know, starting a business, taking that plunge, isn't, the decision to become an entrepreneur is a very, very scary one. So if you get in a, if you get in a fight with the press, um, you're probably going to end up losing that. Uh, but he did write in one time when a reporter wrote an article uh, and said in the course of that article that my father, um, through his educational achievements, going to Princeton and Oxford and Harvard, had managed to overcome uh, his Greek heritage. And my father took great offense at that. And he sat down, he wrote a letter back to the editor uh, and he said, I never viewed my Greek heritage as something I needed to overcome. Um, in contrast, I saw it as something to be proud of and to help propel me forward. I carry it with me. My heritage is extremely important to me uh, everywhere I go. And I'm very proud of the fact that we are. We're very fortunate uh, to, to be of uh, Greek uh, extract uh, heritage. And, and then also, of course, uh, to be born... Uh, and raised in the greatest country on the face of the earth, the best of uh, both worlds. By the way, if you're looking over my shoulder, as everybody's wondering, does, what do they got? What is, what is, what's he got behind them? Uh, <laughs> what you're looking at right here is my grandfather's pistola, which he used in the Greek Revolution of 1820. Wow. Oh our country from the domination of the Turks. So when I went to uh, Greece for a visit uh, to the village, where there were 70 people today in the mountains of Arcadia, they gave me that pistol, which I keep there to remind me of the fight for freedom, not only then, but even today. I loved it. I loved growing up ethnic. Uh, my guess is you guys love growing up ethnic because you're participating in this program now, which shows that you, you deeply care about your ethnicity, your heritage, and you know how rich their culture is, and you want to perpetuate it. So as, again, as a result, was able to put his four kids through college. Um, they have had, uh, those four kids have had eight kids, uh, me being one of them. So he has a, he had eight grandkids before he passed away last year. Um, and all of them, now I can officially say the youngest one has been accepted to college. So uh, coming over here again with, with virtually nothing, um, getting to go to college on the GI Bill, and then, you know, every single one of his children and then grandchildren um, going, to, going to college, I think that, you know, really epitomizes the American dream. And so we do live in this great country that provides so much opportunity for so many. I know you all know that, but... Um, you know, having experienced my grandfather and grandmother's story and, and how they did so well uh, because of America. You know, my, my grandfather used to tell me he had always heard that the streets were paved with gold in America. Of course, it was a figure of speech, obviously, but, but to him it was almost a reality because the opportunity this great country gave him and so many others who took the, the chance and the risk to come here. I'm actually named for my grandfather. My name is Costandina, and he was Costandinos. Uh, he came from Tricola, which is a town kind of north of Athens, a farming area, not far from Delphi. He came over here in 1917. Uh, he always regretted. He said he broke his mother's heart when he left from a large family, but came and came through Ellis Island and just came because he had a few cousins here. You know, that's how immigration often works. It's 
one person comes and then they eventually bring the rest of the family and the rest of the village. The day that I started working for Congressman Sarbanes, you know, he sat me down and taught me this concept, Philotimo, right? Which doesn't even literally translate to English, but the best we can do is love of honor, right? And this passion for, for service, uh, but also just passion to be at the heart of the issues, right? And, and to be warriors. And that's part of our identity as Greeks and as Greek Americans. About being Greek, it's absolutely the greatest thing in the world. I, um, Mike knows this, but I, at the beginning, when the pandemic started and we were doing all the work from home, I was like, well, I probably should have a pandemic project. And it, and it always bothered me that I wasn't taught any Greek. And so I fired up the Duolingo and... Um, and I'm on day 426, and it is just amazing to be able to talk with your papu in Greek. I mean, that is just an absolutely magical experience. And um, the, just even the idea that the Greek language is this time machine. I mean, you know, thousands of years ago, people looked at a parrot and said, that's a papagallo, right? I mean, that is like, you don't have that in really anything else. And I think that is just the coolest thing in the world. So they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's partially true, but always remember what you know will always determine who you know. Okay, so the more that you know, the more you're educated, the more you can soak in what you just heard, you will achieve no matter what you do. Beginning, you're, you're part of the NHS, NHS family now. And while we are happy to provide this program to you and these connections, all we're asking for you to do is to pay it forward and to try to embrace and enjoy your Hellenism and share with others, both your Greek and your non-Greek friends. And uh, you all were selected for this program very carefully and we're proud of you and proud to have you in our family and hope to see you all in person soon. Mm -hmm.